all winning. The ultimate goal, right? Everyone wants to be a winner CEO of your own life. Crushing your goals, swimming in success. Driving that metaphorical Lamborghini of achievement. But let's be real for a moment. Life doesn't always hand out wins, does it? Some of us are playing the game and just not winning. And you know what? That's okay. Because today, we're going to dive deep into the mind of the ancient Stoic philosopher Epictetus and his revolutionary, life-changing, game-altering idea. It's fine to be a loser. In fact, sometimes it's downright preferable. Hashtag loser life. So buckle up, because by the end of this video, not only will you feel less bad about your failures, but you might actually start to embrace them. Welcome to be a loser, if need be. The philosophy of Epictetus. Yes, this is the pep talk you didn't know you needed or maybe you did, but you were too busy losing to realize it. First things first, who was Epictetus? Epictetus was an ancient Stoic philosopher who believed that life isn't about winning, achieving, or being the best. No, no, that's for amateurs. Epictetus believed life was about controlling the one thing you actually have power over. Your mind. Your external circumstances. Completely out of your control. That promotion you didn't get, out of your control. The 15 pounds you've been trying to lose for the past three years. Out of your control. Your ex dating someone new who's inexplicably more attractive. Definitely out of your control. It is not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Yep, this is the part where you stop whining about how life isn't fair and start embracing the fact that you're losing. Because, according to Epictetus, it's not about what happens to you failure, rejection, humiliation, but how you mentally twist that knife into some twisted form of wisdom. Go ahead, fail harder. The Stoics would applaud your courage in accepting your fate. In fact, they'd say you're closer to enlightenment than any of those winners who are too busy basking in their temporary glory. Now, let's get into the philosophical meat of why being a loser can be so freeing. Epictetus argued that external events, like whether you succeed or fail, are not up to you. Winning is often random, fickle, and honestly, for people who are just lucky. Losers, however, oh, we're on the fast track to enlightenment. We cannot choose our external circumstances, but we can always choose how we respond to them. Translation. If life hands you lemons, you don't even need to bother making lemonade. Just sit there with your sour lemons, shrug, and say, Well, this is my fate. Time to be at peace with it. You're officially Zen. What Epictetus is really telling you here is that you can be the CEO of your own mind while being the intern of your actual life. Didn't get that dream job? Who cares? Stoic peace achieved. Got ghosted by your latest Tinder match? Ah, another opportunity to practice inner tranquility. Your team lost every single game this season. Excellent, this is your training ground for mental toughness. You see, success is for the shallow. Winners walk around with their fragile egos, constantly needing validation. But you, dear loser, are a warrior of the inner realm fortified by the sheer amount of not caring anymore. Congratulations. You've transcended the need for worldly validation. Everyone else is trapped in the rat race, but you. You're free to embrace the glorious mediocrity of it all. One of the best lessons from Epictetus is this. Stop trying so hard. Seriously. Why are you exhausting yourself with all these goals and ambitions when none of it is guaranteed to work out? Epictetus would tell you to focus on your mindset, not on outcomes. Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. 
See, you don't have to climb the corporate ladder. You don't need to get that degree. Heck, you don't even need to try to look impressive. You can just exist in full acceptance of the fact that the universe doesn't care whether you succeed or fail. It's all just noise. So, go ahead. Brace that mediocrity. Forget about the hustle culture telling you that you have to grind for 16 hours a day to be successful. Why bother? Do you know who isn't grinding for 16 hours a day? The enlightened losers who are mentally untouchable by the whims of this world. The more you try, the more you'll find yourself frustrated and disappointed when things don't go your way. But if you expect nothing, ah, that's where you really start to win in your mind, anyway. You want to know the secret to not caring about outcomes. It's in Epictetus' philosophy of preparing for the worst. Imagine everything going wrong all the time, and then when it happens, you'll be pleasantly unsurprised. You're welcome. Let's take a moment to talk about winning and why you shouldn't even want it in the first place. I mean, what's the big deal? Winning means pressure. It means expectations. It means now people are looking at you like you actually know what you're doing. And who needs that kind of stress? Winners are the ones constantly living in fear of losing their position. The higher they climb, the more anxious they get about falling. But losers, we're already at rock bottom. There's nowhere to go but up or, you know, just hang out here and enjoy the peace. Nothing to lose means nothing to fear. Freedom is the only worthy goal in life. It is won by disregarding things that lie beyond our control. You hear that? Disregard everything beyond your control. Let's face it, winning is usually beyond your control. Why base your happiness on a variable as unpredictable as success? Focus instead on freedom. Freedom from expectations. Freedom from society's incessant need for you to be the best. Freedom from having to constantly prove yourself to others. True power lies in letting go of the need to win and embracing the sweet, sweet liberation of losing. You've officially transcended the rat race. Let's get practical for a minute. You might be asking, but how do I gracefully accept my losing status without feeling terrible about it? Excellent question. Epictetus has some advice for that, too. Don't seek for everything to happen as you wish it would, but rather wish that everything happens as it actually will. This is how you reframe losing as winning. You simply change your perspective. Didn't get what you wanted, that's great. You didn't need it anyway. Life gave you exactly what you needed to grow, evolve, and most importantly accept defeat. You're a loser, sure, but you're an enlightened loser. You've unlocked the philosophical cheat code to life, where nothing bothers you anymore because you've already accepted that most things are going to go wrong. That's right. No more disappointments. No more heartache. When you expect to lose, you've already won the game of mental mastery. So, here we are, at the end of our journey through Epictetus' philosophy. What have we learned that winning is overrated? that failure is inevitable, and that being a loser is honestly the best thing that could happen to you. Because once you let go of the need to succeed in the world's eyes, you've unlocked the true key to freedom. The greater the difficulty, the more glory in surmounting it. Except, why bother surmounting anything? Why not just sit back, relax, and embrace your losses? After all, the stoic path is one of inner peace, not outer success. So, go ahead and be a loser. Don't chase success. Let it chase you while you sit there, not caring. You'll thank me later.